All right, we'll do a little warm-up before we cover new reactions with amines, but what I want you guys to do is to propose a synthesis starting with the simple alkane. Let me clean it up. And I want us to make this compound. What would we name this amine, first of all, before we do our synthesis? So we'd number going one, two, three, four. So this would be two, three, dimethyl, what? Butanamine. All right, so let's try to come up with a synthetic graph for making two, three, dimethyl butanamine. You could use either, I believe. With simple molecules, you can use methyl ethyl butyl. Once you get into really complicated ones, you want to switch to more formal IUPAC. So this may require a few steps to get there. Let's do a little bit of retro synthesis and work backwards. So I'll get you guys started with this. So if we think about making this molecule, what would the intermediate to it be? <coughs> yeah, we could maybe have something like uh, a carboxylic acid that we're ultimately converting, but let's do really simple stuff. If we think about our notes yesterday, if we look at all of these, all of these reactions that we did yesterday involve starting with an alkyl halide, right? We can change an alkyl halide to an amine pretty easily by a few different routes. So what I would do is say, all right, let's go backwards and we'll put a halogen on there. And then the main question is, well, how can we get a halogen on that position? What do you guys think? Double bond. So we know we can do addition to double bonds and get the halogen to install on that less substituted side, so anti-Markovnikov. And then if we think about this going backwards even further, we can make a double bond from another alkyl halide. So we could have a leaving group there and do an E2 elimination reaction. And then if we keep on going backwards, we can add a halogen, no problem, to that most substituted carbon. So let's try to come up with a step-by-step mechanism for going, or not mechanism, but a step-by-step -step synthesis for going from our alkane to our substituted amine. Yes, that's NH2. Let me write it bigger. I'm just going to do the forward arrows and then I'll ask you guys to help me fill in the reagents for this. So we've got this step. Next thing we want to do is form our alkene. And we've got bromine. All right, so for step one, what reagents do we need? Uh, radical reaction. We haven't used those in a while, but radical reactions will always brominate your most substituted carbon 
uh, with the exception of quaternary carbon. So we've got a tertiary site. Next reaction, we want to form a double bond. Tert-butoxide. Why not sodium hydride? Yeah, it's not sterically bulky enough. You want to use a big bulky base because we want our Hoffman product in this case. So we'll use potassium terputoxide. That will give us our Hoffman elimination <coughs> product. And then if we want to add bromine back to the less substituted side, what can we do? So we'll do anti-Markovnikov um, halogenation. And then what can we do to get that bromine converted over to an amino group. There's a few different routes. Does anybody want to propose one? The thing? Fair enough. <laughs> so there was one route we talked about, which was sodium azid, and then what do we need in the second step? We need to reduce sodium azid, so we'll use LAH, followed by water. Or, if we want to get the same product, what's another route we could take? <laughs> Thalamid. <laughs> exactly. So if we treat this first, I'll do step one with thalamid. Remember, you first need to have deprotonated thalamid, so it's got to have that negative charge on there. And then we react it with our alkyl bromide. And then what do we need in order to pop it open and to release our amine? Yeah, acid or hydrazine. So H2 and NH2. So that was our Gabriel synthesis. Was there any other route? What if we use sodium cyanide? If we did sodium cyanide, we'd actually end up with an extra carbon on there, so that wouldn't work super well. So these would be probably the two best routes for getting your amine installed. Um, and either method works well. What's the benefit to using a Gabriel synthesis as opposed to sodium azid? What was that? It won't give you cancer, and it won't explode in your face. So the Gabriel synthesis is a nice workaround um, to avoid working with the zids. All right, now we get to change gears to more interesting chemistry. We're going to cover reductive amination today. So I'll show you guys the overall mechanism behind reductive amination. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to start out with a ketone or an aldehyde. So we'll make a note, ketone or aldehyde. And then in the next step, you're going to react this with catalytic acid and amine. In this case, I'm going to use ammonia. And we're going to drive off water from this reaction. What will our product be? Yeah, what do we call that functional group when we have a carbon-nitrogen double bond. It's not an enamine. We don't have an alkene. It's just an imine, exactly. So this is older material. And in fact, imines in this situation could be your imine or aminium ion. What's an aminium ion? Yeah, it's just a protonated amine. So oftentimes, because this is under acidic conditions, you can have this as your protonated um, state, which is an aminium ion, or it can be neutral as your amine. Um, both are present in equilibrium. And then in the next step, what we're going to do is a reduction. And when we reduce this, we're essentially just going to reduce that double bond, right? Similar to reducing an alkene, and by doing this, we're able to get a normal amine. So this is called reductive amination. It's a really simple way of converting a ketone or an aldehyde to an amine. And the nice thing with this is we can actually get substituted amines. In this example, I used ammonia, but we could have used um, methylamine. We could have used diethylamine, any sort of amine you want. 
Um, so you can also um, go through enamine intermediates as well if you're dealing with a secondary amine. What conditions do you think we could use for the reduction? How do we normally reduce double bonds like that? Hydride source, what's another way we can make a double bond go to a single bond? H2 and platinum. So the reality is hydride sources or H2 and palladium on carbon can be used, but are unselective. Which means if you're doing a complicated natural product synthesis, you don't want to accidentally reduce other sites on your molecule. You want to pick um, the right reagent for that reduction. And so what we're going to do is analyze the reactivity of a ketone versus our aminium ion. Which one of these do you think is more electrophilic? The ketone or the aminium ion? Yeah, the aminium ion is way more electrophilic. So if we think about this, because it's way more electrophilic, we can get away with using much more gentle reducing conditions. Than a typical ketone or an aldehyde. We normally need something like sodium borohydride or um, lithium aluminum hydride for a ketone or an aldehyde, but with an aminium ion, we can reduce it using really, really gentle reagents. So this one requires So let's make a list of some um, hydride sources. What's the strongest hydride source that we know of, in this class at least? LAH. So we've got lithium aluminum hydride. If we think about the trends, we know that this is going to be the strongest. What's the next strongest? Sodium borohydride, I heard somebody say that. All right, so sodium borohydride we know is a little bit weaker. And that has mostly to do um, with the nature of the aluminum um, versus the boron. Um, aluminum, in this case, is going to be a much better hydride donor. And then last but not least, we're going to see a new reagent get used a lot that's a variant of sodium borohydride. Whoops. This is cyanoborohydride, and this is much weaker. Why do you think sodium cyanoborohydride is weaker than sodium borohydride? Yeah, exactly. If you think about this cyano group, it's a really strong electron withdrawer that's going to stabilize the anion on um, the boron. If we think about sodium borohydride, it's not uh, getting stabilized through induction at all. So if we think about it, this is going to be more stable due to induction. Which means it's going to be a weaker source of hydride. 
the cool thing with this is it's such a weak source of hydride, it won't touch a ketone or an aldehyde. It will only reduce an imine because the imine is much more reactive. So let's take a look at reductive amination using sodium borohydride, or sorry, sodium cyanoborohydride. We take a ketone and we treat it with NaBH3Cn, the sodium cyanoborohydride, you get no reaction simply because that hydride source isn't strong enough. But our workaround is to first convert <coughs> this ketone into an imine. So we'll use H plus and NH, let me make this arrow longer. NH3, we'll drive off water and we'll get our aluminum ion. Now we just need sodium cyanoborohydride. When we do this, you can get your amine. The really cool thing with this reaction is you can actually do it in one pot, right? Because the sodium um, cyanoborohydride that I'm showing as step two won't touch any of the unreacted ketone, which means you can just mix all of this together and go directly from your ketone to your amine in one step. So let's make a little note here. Doesn't need be in separate steps. That's Na, BH, three CN cannot react with the ketone. Yep. Um, what about um, regios? Is it? Uh, did they get? So are you wondering, is this position going to be R or S? Yes. In this case, you're not going to get um, stereoselectivity out of this reaction. You'll get a racemic mixture, at least at that stereo center. So it's really hard to control stereochemistry, at least using um, the reactions we see in the client textbook. If we tried to do this reduction using sodium borohydride, we would accidentally reduce the ketone before it has a chance to even get to the imidine. So in this case, this is a really nice workaround. Yep. I'm showing them as separate steps, but in reality, you can put all of these into one pot. So for example, if we want to condense this down and make it into one step, oops, should be a single bond. First step, you would have acid and NH3. Step two, you would have, oops, sorry, I just was trying to make this point and <laughs> did a poor job. And then below the arrow, you put sodium cyanoborohydride. So you don't need to put number one and number two. This can all go in the same reaction flask. Does that make sense? Okay, the nice thing about this reaction is it can be used to form all sorts of amines. So I'll just take a simple ketone. And we can get a primary amine. So we'll do NH2. We can get a secondary amine where we've got an R group coming off. or we can even get a tertiary amine. All of these can be accomplished using reductive amination. For the first one, we said we just need ammonia as our nucleophile. The bottom one, we need a primary amine. And with the bottom one, we need a secondary amine. And then the other reagents, they all need 
to form our aminium ions, we need acid and then sodium cyanoborohydride. The other day I said getting substituted amines is really hard with alkylation because you over alkylate. This is a nice way of controlling it and gaining selectivity. So we can get our primary, secondary, or tertiary. What if we want to get a quaternary amine? Can we use reductive amination directly? No. In fact, if we try to um, form an imine with a, um, an amine that's got three alkyl groups on it, it won't work. However, the workaround is just add methyl iodide to this and the lone pair on that nitrogen can attack methyl iodide. All right, so now we get a look at drugs. <laughs> the first one's a harmless drug. All right, so this first drug is one of the best sellers in the United States. Not Tylenol. <laughs> So what we're going to do is treat this with an amine and we'll do reductive amination. Hang on a second, I can't write this fast. This is called Zoloft. So Zoloft is one of the biggest selling antidepressants. It's used for anxiety disorders and a wide variety of other things. One thing I will say that I find pretty interesting is if you look at a lot of these chemical structures for psychoactive compounds, they've got this benzene ring and then over here they've got a nitrogen somewhat removed from the benzene ring. So oftentimes these drugs that are used to regulate your brain chemistry are um, compounds that have aromatic moieties and amino moieties coming off of them. So Zoloft is one of those examples. What reagents would we need to accomplish this transformation? What amine would we need? Yeah, methylamine. So if we look at this, we know we've converted that ketone to this amine which means we've got to be using methylamine. And then in step two, we could treat this with catalytic acid and then sodium cyanoborohydride. However, if you did this um, reaction, you would actually end up with um, racemic, not in antiopure Zoloft because of this stereo center. It's hard to control um, using reductive amination. Yep? Just take a quick aside. I mean, if we don't have time. I just want to, uh, is it true that like a lot of pharmaceutical drugs are like kind of based on like neurotransmitters, at least stuff like that were like better? Yeah. Yeah, uh, in particular, a lot of phenethyl amines are um, psychoactive, so they're used as uh, Antidepressants are used to control ADD. They're used in recreational drugs, for that matter. Um, so a lot of the phenethylamines start messing with your serotonin uh, levels in your body by uh, reacting with uh, acceptors and inhibitors for uh, serotonin. Uh, if you go on and take biochemistry, you'll talk a lot more about that. Yeah. All right, how many of you guys have watched Breaking Bad? <laughs> Sorry, did you have a question, Chloe? Yes, it would matter. So this is kind of a simplified case. Yeah. Yep. Is the precursor, is, what, is that like a naturally occurring compound? No, this would be something that you'd make as an intermediate, and then the last step could be a reductive amination. Yeah. All right, so a few of you guys have seen Breaking Bad. You guys can't yell at me because of this, because it's actually a problem in your textbook. <laughs> But in Breaking Bad, 
they actually hired some chemists to make sure that the show was accurate. And I remember watching the show, and at one point the DEA agent is uh, talking about the meth that they're finding, and they're like, oh man, they're doing an old school P2P cook. Question is, what does P2P stand for? What do you guys think P2P could stand for? Looking at what I have on the board. <laughs> what would this compound be called? If we were to number it, we would go one, two, three, right? So it would be phenyl, two, propanone. So when they refer to a P2P cook in Breaking Bad, they're actually referring, referring to phenyl 2 propanone. It's implied that's what's Wal what Walter White is using. And then what he's ultimately doing is converting this into an amine. Oops. And if you watch the show, he steals methylamine. And if we think about it, right, we're adding on this methylamine substituent and he's doing reductive amination on the show. So this is methamphetamine. Super nasty stuff. Um, it's a really big problem because of how easy it is to synthesize. So it's pretty common. I get OCHEM students, they're like, do you know how to make meth? And it's like, yeah, pretty much any sophomore that's taken organic chemistry can figure it out. Um, so all of the precursors are super strictly controlled by the DEA. It's very, very hard to get a hold of these, and it's made life as a chemist very challenging, um, simply because a lot of the precursors are used for legitimate, non-drug-related activities, but the DEA says you can't buy them without a permit anymore. Um, if we're thinking about how to do this, you just take that methylamine, acid, and sodium cyanoborohydride. However, on the show, if you're a fan of the show, he actually uses a different route. He dumps um, alum aluminum filings and uh, into a reactor, and he's doing a mercury aluminum amalgam and doing the reduction that way. Um, he doesn't use sodium cyanoborohydride. Yeah. So, just interesting tidbit as far as TV trivia goes. Let's do a few practice reactions, though. So propose a synthesis using reductive amination for the following compound. This one looks pretty crazy. Yeah, this one's a little bit tricky, but if we think about reductive amination retrosynthetically, right, we either made this bond in blue, we either made that bond in green, or we made that bond in red, right? So there's a few different ways we can tease this apart. Let's do the red route first and think about what the precursor must have looked like if we were doing reductive amination and forming that red bond. So I'll make my retrosynthetic arrow we do it this way, that means that that nitrogen must have attacked some sort of carbonyl
that was right here. Let me actually expand this out a bit more. Right, so if we're reforming that red squiggly bond, we're basically forming a new single bond between where that oxygen is and where the nitrogen is. So that's one option. What about the blue route? Yeah, it'd be the same thing, just a mirror image. So I'll just put the same. And then if we're doing the green retro synthetic route, we could do it. However, it would look a little funny. Let me clean this up. And you would have this big cyclic starting material. So chances are this one would be your best option. Does that make sense? So when you're looking at this retro synthetically, just identify your carbon nitrogen bond, cleave that, and then think about, all right, the carbon that used to be that carbon nitrogen bond must have been an aldehyde or a ketone. All right, let's do another synthesis problem. All right, in this synthesis, what I want you guys to do is to start with methyl cyclohexane. And I want you to make this compound. So the main question is, how can we get there? So I'll let you guys work on this. You're more than welcome to get together with the group and see if you can come up with a synthetic route to convert methylcyclohexane um, to this complicated looking amine. Remember, whenever you see these problems work backwards, it can be super overwhelming to look at the starting material right away. Thank you. 
All right, raise your hand if you think you've got it. All right, look, looks like we've got a pretty good portion. So let's work backwards through this. If we're doing this retrosynthetically, we know that each of these bonds must have been formed, right? That carbon-nitrogen bond must have been a CO double bond before. So we'll kind of work backwards. All right, that means we've got a ketone and an aldehyde. In order to go in the forward direction, we would need dimethylamine acid and sodium cyanoborohydride. Now the big question is, how can we get from that cyclic ring system to the ketone and aldehyde? Okay, so ozonolysis. We'll work backwards. Okay, with ozonolysis, what functional group do we need? An alkene in this case. We know if we cleave this alkene, we're going to cleave that double bond, ring open that to give you your aldehyde and ketone. And then how can we go from the alkane starting material to the alkene intermediate? Yeah. Okay, so now let's piece it all together. So forward. <laughs> We said we can do Br2, UV. That will give us a good leaving group. And then in the next step, we need to get to our Zaitsev alkene. What base should we use? Small base. So sure, let's use, I don't know, sodium methoxide, for example. It's not going to do SN2 chemistry, right? It's a strong base. It's going to do E2. And then if we do O3, what should we cleave it open with? Uh, yeah, DMS, dimethyl sulfide. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we've got that guy. Yep. You can also use NaH. Any non-bulky base will give you that more substituted alkene. And then we've got NaBH3Cn. And there you go. You can get all the way to your final product. All right, for the pod, one thing I'm going to ask you guys to do is to read ahead a little bit in your book about the reaction for the diazonium salt. Uh, but the mechanism that I'm giving you guys is a pretty um, cool reaction. It involves a reaction from last term as well. That's a big hint. But uh, if you guys get stuck on it, let me know, and I can help you work on it. <laughs>